Okay, everybody. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, I'll wait a little bit, a little bit for everybody to get back in here. So the computer died when we were setting everything up. We forgot to plug in the uh, uh, USB-C cord. So I apologize. Hopefully everybody comes back soon. Let me go ahead and uh, let everyone know I'm back. All right. So yeah, the for those of you coming in, the USB-C cord, uh, the power cord, wasn't plugged in completely to our computer. So now it's plugged in. So go ahead and guys, as you fill in here, go ahead and send me a comment. Let me know you're here. If you guys have any questions at all. I'm going to go ahead and repeat some of the things I said in the last stream. So that way if somebody's watching the stream and didn't catch the previous one, um, they won't miss anything. By the way, um, so on my Patreon page, I have a full detailed tutorial on the same method that I'm using right here um, on this portrait, except it's probably far more detailed than I'll even get into right now. Um, and uh, if you guys go over to Patreon, if you really want to know the technique that I'm doing here, uh, go to there, and there's a, uh, it's my monochromatic portrait technique. Same technique that I teach uh, when I do the Airbrush Art Circus and other classes. And so far this month, um, uh, the Patreon, we're not charging for this month, because it's been a, it's been a, spotty month as far as content is concerned so um, we're making sure that no one really gets charged if the content isn't up you know we don't have enough content out but as we get more and more tutorials made uh, yeah we'll start charging again a little more but right now we're just kind of letting you guys see what what kind of stuff we'll be putting up there What's up, Fernando? What's up, Muddy Image? Yeah, yeah, my computer battery died. Sorry about that, guys. But it is going now. We're already at 6%. <laughs> so we'll be fine. So once, uh, once everybody fills up in here, I'll start talking about my technique some more. And for those of you who are here on the, la the last, the, the part of the stream that died, um, you'll probably hear me repeat myself a little bit. Also, it is a live stream, guys, so we can talk about whatever. It's just if I run out of things to say, I'll just go into teaching mode. Start talking about my technique. Uh, Fernando says there's a lot of lag. Yeah, probably. Sorry about that. It has been spotty today. So hopefully it clears up here pretty soon. I just saw, yeah, I'm seeing my hand lag out right there on my screen. So we probably should start hardwiring this through an Ethernet cord. Right now we're still on Wi-Fi, and that might have something to do with it.
So I apologize about the internet connection today, guys. We're supposed to have this super great internet, but I don't know if, it, if, if the lag becomes an issue, I'll probably upgrade our internet. Yeah, it hasn't been a problem in the past, so I think it might be just a just a today kind of thing. So it might clear up here pretty soon. We have had a lot of storms here in Florida lately, and that could have something to do with it. So for those of you just tuning in, we are in uh, Florida at our tattoo studio called Eden's Edge Tattoo. So Faith and I opened a tattoo studio some months ago, and um, we opened it with our friend Alex, and he's been helping us out with these live streams, and um, that's where we are right now. So during the day, I spend most of my day tattooing. Um, and then whenever I finish tattooing with my available time, I do the streams like this for you guys so uh, I can share my airbrushing with you. And we do have solid plans to stream some of my tattoos. I just have to come up with the logistics for that. We almost streamed um, we almost streamed when Brady was here, but I kind of chickened out because I was doing a technique that I wasn't fully comfortable with, so I chickened out. Sorry. <laughs> I was trying a new technique out with tattooing, so I didn't want everyone asking me questions that I was only just figuring out for myself anyway. But when it comes to black and gray tattoos, I definitely feel like I have that down, so... It, the next time I probably when we do Alex's tattoo next, I might go ahead and stream that one. So we started this big sleeve tattoo on Alex. Uh, Alex is our apprentice here, and um, we've got a, a pretty good gray line set up on it. And so by the next time, um, if we stream the tattoos, we'll probably stream that. Brady says, still an amazing tattoo. Yeah, I think I did a pretty good job for using a new technique. Brady was definitely challenging me, for sure. Taking me out of my comfort zone a little bit. So, I'll talk a little bit about my technique. Again, I'm going to repeat myself a little. But just for those of you that are just tuning in, we got, looks like 15 people in here. And again, I apologize for the lag. So... This technique is the exact same technique that I use on my Patreon page during my uh, monochromatic um, uh, portrait class there. The only thing that I do differently that I am very proud of it, uh, as far as having a good idea is before, whenever I would do this graphite on the back, so what I do is I take a chunk of graphite and I just kind of scribble onto the back to make the transfer. What I was having a problem with in the past is that my graphite would leave all this dusty residue all over my panel, and that was kind of hard to fight during the tattoo. So in order to remedy that, what I did is I took a piece of uh, um, paper towel, and I rubbed the graphite into the back, and that cured the problem. Now I don't have all that crazy dusty re residue. In fact, it's very clean, not to mention my transfer is a lot lighter than it was before, which is good for me because I don't have to work so hard to hide all those graphite lines in the end. And when it comes to doing portraits, you know, I have a freehand technique that I've taught you guys or talked about, um, but when it comes to doing portraits, especially memorial portraits, there's no shame in the game. Just trace it and get it right because in the end, doing a memorial portrait is, is a service that you're providing to somebody. And... Um, there's no reason why you shouldn't trace it. So you can see how it's kind of going down right now. I 
Now, I, w I mentioned before that this is a low resolution image. And um, so the big challenge for me in this painting will be uh, still making my image accurate you know, still getting that high res resolution look when the my reference image is very low resolution, it's very pic pixelated. So there's a lot of missing information. But when it comes to memorial portraits, you don't have the luxury of having a better quality photo, um, being as how your subject has passed away. So you gotta work with what you got and do your best. So because I have so much experience doing portraits, I'm going to use my experience there to make up some of that missing information. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually reference somebody who looks similar and um, use that. In fact, uh, I've been meaning to do a portrait for one of my friends. I have a friend who died when we were in high school, and um, I actually hang out with his brothers quite a bit. And, um, you know, we're in our 30s now, and their son looks a lot like my friend from high school, and they're about the same age now. So I was thinking about trying a portrait out of, the, of my friend, which is their son's uncle, and using him to make up some of that missing information because in the 90s, all the photos were usually done with one of those disposable cameras. So you had um, you know, very low quality images. Thanks, Fernando. Um, Anyway, so that's what I'm going to try to do whenever it is that I get around to doing that portrait. Uh, again, I'm going to use their son to make up some of that missing information. And their son is a little bit younger, so I have a little bit of time. Um, again, if anyone has any questions, go ahead and post them up. If you want to see this technique that I'm doing all the way through, uh, check it out on my Patreon. You can go watch it while I work on this. That way you're kind of savvy as to the steps that I'm taking. Um, I was working on a mermaid uh, painting. I had to put that aside because I didn't want to put this painting off too much longer. So uh, I will be picking up on the mermaid painting as soon as this painting is done. Again, make sure you're checking to see that everything is transferring and everything is. It's transferring very well. Yeah, the paper towel technique, Fernando, that was that was a good good one to take note of. All right, Fernando, take it easy. Have a good night. Again, so for those of you just tuning in, I'm focusing on the dark areas and uh, because we are painting so when the surface is light, like this one is, I focus on the dark areas. When the surface is dark, like if it was a tan gray or something, I would focus on the light areas as far as my registration marks are concerned. Now, um, I'm also scribbling it in a little because since we use the paper towel to um, smooth out that graphite, uh, I can actually get a lot more detail because it's lighter. So. Yeah, I'm really happy about that idea right there. So as far as what information you give yourself on a painting like this, it's really up to you. Like some people might only need a few little pieces of information. They don't need a lot of detail. Um, 
So it's really up to the artist. Some people want all of the information. You know, they want all the details in their stencil or their transfer. And if that's you, um, that's okay too. And again, for those of you just tuning in, um, this is the exact same technique that I actually teach uh, at, at my classes. So if you were to come to the Airbrush Art Circus or another one of those events, this is exactly what we do in class. So does anyone have any questions not related to what I'm doing right now? Um, I almost, so I, I spent the good part of, before we started today, um, cleaning my airbrush because I left it dirty for a long time. And uh, Faith was suggesting that I show that on camera. So if you guys are interested in that, maybe I'll, uh, maybe my next stream, I'll show you guys how I clean my airbrush which I don't think I, I'm an expert at doing, I, but if y'all are interested in seeing that. I did buy something today from Hobby Lobby. Uh, thanks, <laughs> Super. yeah, I need more likes. Hey guys, if you guys are watching right now and you wanna see more videos like this, like and subscribe. I know that's something everyone says on YouTube, but it really, really helps out a whole lot. So if everyone watching, if you guys could like the video right now, that would be very appreciated. And uh, again, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And if you click on the bell, you'll be notified for every live stream that I do. Because even though I try to stick to a schedule, sometimes that's too hard to do. And, um, you know, I, I always try to stream on Sundays, but oftentimes something comes up on Sundays and I can't stream. And uh, so if you click the bell, you'll always be notified to when I stream. And if you want exclusive access to like some of my more detailed tutorials, uh, that can be found on my Patreon channel. Also, if you want more of a one-on-one -on -one lesson, well, it's not one-on-one, -on -one, but if you want, say there's something you're specifically struggling with and you want me to really focus on that, uh, that's something you'll also get on my Patreon channel. So I, I sometimes will open up these private sessions. So I stream just the same way we're doing right now, but I'll stream just for you know maybe three to four people and just answer their specific questions. And I'll usually have like a piece of paper that I can, or a panel that I can just kind of go through whatever techniques they want me to go through. Yeah, uh, Super Sicko says it's, he says 15 by 20 clayboard from Hobby Lobby. This is actually a 16, 12 by 16 piece of clayboard. Uh, he says, how much is a Patreon channel? Well, we had tiers uh, that were 5, 10, and 20, I believe. Um, but now, right now, we're trying to get everyone over to the $5 tier just so we can kind of streamline streamline the um, content uh, and just do one tier until we have enough content. Uh, basically, we don't want... We want to make sure everybody is getting what they pay for. And I'm all right. When Faith is all right, we're all right with doing something a little bit cheaper for right now. And if, in the future, if we end up with uh, a lot more in-depth content... Uh, we'll change the tier prices again. But for right now, we're going to move everyone over over to um, the $5 tier. But um, also, I wanted to point this out. Now, I'm not sponsored by Iwata. I am good friends with those people. Um, and they have helped me on in the past, but I'm not officially sponsored. But I did find this. Uh, it's the And I paid for it at Hobby Lobby. It's a cleaning kit by Iwata. So if you guys get a chance to go by Hobby Lobby or maybe you can buy it online, this is very handy. So um, I've actually spent a lot of time picking up little, I guess, tips on different gear that you can buy for cleaning your airbrush. Uh, Iwata took all that advice from all the years of, you know, what is it, like uh, troubleshooting how to clean an airbrush, and they just put it in a little easy-to-use kit. So this was very handy. I think it was, I don't know, like 20 or 30 bucks. I'm not sure. Uh, but I highly recommend it. So if you, it's just Iwata's little cleaning kit. Cool thing.
Uh, thanks, Super Sicko. Appreciate it. Super Sicko said he's signing up for the Patreon. And uh, also, guys, if you want, we have the super chat open. I think it's should be ready to go. So if you ever, if you just wanted to kind of tip a little bit of money, that would be very appreciated as well. I always feel kind of silly saying that because that's not why I do these videos, but I do appreciate it. Also, if anyone has any questions that um, aren't related to what I'm doing, just go ahead and post them up. I know this type of thing is probably more boring than the actual like painting itself but I did promise that I would live stream the entire process. So um, here we are. I will talk a little bit as we paint about some of the things that I've learned in doing memorial portraits. And because that's a very, um, heavy thing so it's a it's a it's a it's a big responsibility to the family and so that's why i trace memorial portraits and i don't try to freehand them because i want to respect the family and the accuracy because they in the end they they know this person and um you know it means a lot it I, the, one of the one of the first memorial portraits I did. I've, I've done a few. It's um. It's a heavy thing when you see the reactions, and uh, uh, that of the family members. Um. Yeah, I've even done it for my own family that's passed away, and even then, it's a very heavy thing to witness. I guess I don't. As an artist, I don't always. Um. I don't know, I, I don't always understand the impact that a portrait like this has on people because until I see it, and uh, yeah, it's a heavy thing. I, I don't wanna talk too much about that and get too deep, but um, it's a big responsibility and very, very, very re rewarding. And I, I, there's a few that I still owe some people. I wouldn't say I owe them, but um, I definitely uh, I, have, I have a few more p portraits that I should do. Same with tattoos. Um, it's a big responsibility even doing tattoo portraits, especially memorial portraits. I, I don't think anyone should just do it. I, I, I understand if, if you know, you've been tasked with it, but um, if, you, if you're a tattoo artist and you've been tasked with doing a memorial portrait for somebody, I definitely think you should put in the time to really, really, really learn portrait art. What's up, Taiwan in the house? <laughs> yeah, worldwide. Oh, well, thank you. He says, I'm a natural teacher. Thank you. So these eyes are, are going to be difficult. I might need to, let me pull up the reference on my phone. Uh, because I want to make sure I get it right. Because the, the printed image can only do so much. 
a lot of this information I'm going to have to make up because it just really isn't there in the reference. I do recommend when you're making these transfers to have your reference available to you, if not having, if not just have it right here next to you. So it'll help you with some of this image, uh, you know, this part of the image that didn't get printed as well. And this is just printed on regular paper. This is nothing special about my print. It's low quality. I didn't have to go and get some crazy good quality. I'm going to be using my tablet uh, as my reference material. So I don't have to worry about making some high resolution, you know, very expensive print for reference. I just use a, a iPad Pro. I also went into my iPad Pro to mess with the image a little because his eyes were so dark in the original image that you could barely make out that detail. So what I did is I went into Lightroom and I brought up the contrast a lot or I brought up the um, brightness a lot so that I could see some of that lost information. So basically we live in a digital era and in a digital picture, a lot of information is there that you can't see unless you mess with the resolution. So um, if you get the image and the eyes look dark or something looks blown out or whatever, try taking it into Photoshop or Lightroom or something like that and try to see if that information is just lost in the darkness. And in the case of his eyes being too dark and I couldn't see him in the original image, they were there after I boosted the contrast and I pulled some of that out. There's quite a bit of, well, quite a bit is relative, but there was a lot of Photoshop work that I put into this reference, but I mean, if you're a Photoshop person and you're savvy, it's very, very minimal. Also, if you're a tattoo artist, I definitely recommend the same thing. Don't just go with the photo as it's provided. If you can go into Photoshop and enhance the photo, I highly recommend doing that. Uh, Super Sicko says, within the airbrush process, you've never seen me use stencils. Uh, yeah, so when it's... I, I, I don't really use a lot of stencils, but... I do if I feel like it's necessary to the photo. I don't know if I don't use stencils out of principle or laziness. I don't know why I don't use stencils. I just, the more I started painting, the less I used them. Like uh, over the years, I just start using them less and less. But in this case, I'm using this paper transfer, but you won't see me use any like freehand shields or anything like that. Or tape or Masking. I don't mask anything off. I try to do as much as I can freehand. I just like the look of freehand a lot better. Um, I feel like it has a more natural painted look. You know, I like that painterly look. I like it to look hand done. I feel like if you take realism too far, and this is just my personal preference, preference, if you take realism too far, I feel like you take the reason for doing it away. So I always try to make things very realistic, but not so realistic that um, it's indistinguishable from a photo. Although I'm sure some people would argue that I, my work is indistinguishable from a photo, but I don't, I don't think that it is. I would say it's stylized realism, in my personal opinion. Uh, so Black Dan says, do I normally do them in monochromatic? Yes, I do. Um, the reason I usually do them in monochromatic is because it sets a mood. And I feel like for memorial portraits, sometimes it's a really nice mood. Also, it's more, it's, it's a little faster for me. 
a lot of times, and that's not the case now because he's been, you know, he, he passed away a while ago, but um, in the past, sometimes I only have a night to paint the whole thing. Like, I've, I've, I've had sometimes where I started at nine o'clock at night and I finish it sometimes in the wee hours of the morning and uh, I don't have a lot of time. So I started doing them in monochromatic for that reason, but I also prefer the look of them. So it's not solely for that reason. Uh, but if, if I was requested, if somebody asked me to do it in color, I would. But if they just give me a choice, I'll probably do it in monochromatic. Uh, yeah, Super Sicko. I, I teach everything on Patreon, especially if you watch the tutorial that I did on the, um, uh, it's called Monochromatic um, Portrait, Airbrush Portrait, I think is what I called it. Um, that has every everything that I could think to even put in there, it's including how to get little details, you know, just with your airbrush and not using any, you know, stenciling techniques at all. Again, that's just a preference of mine. I just like the look of it. What I might end up doing by the time I get done with this is trying to find this hat because there's a lot of information in this hat that's completely missing in my reference. So maybe I'll, maybe I can look it up online. Also, if anyone watching is interested in having a tattoo done by me, um, we're booking for that. You, of course, you'd have to travel to Florida, but um, yeah. Whatever, Alex. So, so this says, I think it says Second Infantry. So I'm definitely gonna have to look that up to make sure, but I'll get the shapes right at least. I guess that's an end. So, because I, I don't have this hat in front of me, what I'm going to do is just trace the shapes. And then with my airbrush, after I get the hat, um, after I look it up online or, or ask the family for a photo of it, um, I'll try to fill in the details a little bit better. So I might save that for one of the last things that I do. It's funny, one of my favorite things to do is memorial portraits, especially in tattoos or airbrush, I don't care. But um, I often will have people tell me that they would get a memorial portrait, but they don't trust anyone to do it. And that's when I really get excited to do it. I, I really enjoy the challenge of getting something like this that's very important to somebody. Like, I enjoy doing it right. Like because I, I put in a lot of work and a lot of practice over the years to be capable of doing it right. And um, it makes me feel good to be able to provide that service to people, to, to get a portrait correct. And you know, sometimes maybe I don't do as well, but I, I definitely like, I don't know, I feel like I'm, I don't know. Probably one, you know, I, I, I like, I put in the effort to do, to get it right, I guess is what I'm trying to say.
checking my reference on the phone real quick. Make sure I got everything I need. definitely have to make up quite a bit of information on my own. All right, I think I got it there. So the next step will be just kind of making sure. So I, I often like will do this kind of flip back mo movement. Uh, by the way, all the beeping, that's um, Alex coming in and out. <laughs> Alex got a tattoo today. How are you feeling? You're in pain? So I'm um, if you do if you do this movement right here, it can help you uh, locate some of the stuff, maybe some missing information. Like right here, I just found one. Or you could even black out some stuff just so you can recognize it as dark. So something like that. I only recommend doing some of this scribble movement if um, if you did the what I did in the beginning using the paper towel. Because if you scribble like this and you on your graphite transfer and you didn't use a paper towel on the back of it, you'll end up with way too much graphite dust on this painting. And it'll be really hard to get rid of it all. And I know that from experience. So Faith and I went to the Salvador Dali Museum yesterday. That was amazing. Definitely highly inspirational. So if you guys are ever in uh, Tampa Bay, I definitely recommend checking out the Salvador Dali Museum. It's a very quick thing. You can do it in just maybe 20 minutes, but it's worth it. All right, I think I got it all. I flip back like that and again for for grins I'll go ahead and just show you what it looks like if I were to you know give myself that extra information by just kind of scribbling in some of these and it helps helps it look a little bit e you know easier to read okay all right so if you don't want to mess with um, re-stenciling it like let's say you're worried about Maybe you missed a few pieces and you want to be able to put those back in later. I recommend just flipping the stencil up and out of the way. So you guys can't see off camera, but I left it still taped down, but I just flipped it out of the way and I won't remove the stencil until I've, I'm sure that I got all the information that I needed. Another thing you can do is take a rag and kind of clean off the edges, just making sure that you get all that kind of 
extra graphite off, but don't smear it. Which it doesn't look like I got really any extra graphite. The the darkness that you're seeing right now, in fact, I, there's more graphite on there from just me doing that. But the, the darkness is from me um, sanding it because it was just a very thin coat of gesso that was on this clay board. So now I'm going to make the paint. Uh, Brady wants to know what Alex got. He He's working on that uh, Hanya mask that he's got on his leg. Uh, Super Sicko wants to know what the Patreon channel is. is what's it called, Faith? Uh, it's just you, Ryan Townsend. If you go to Patreon uh, slash Ryan Townsend, you should find it pretty easily. Okay, so now I'm going to make the color. Um... If you guys in the comments or something, uh, we'll, we'll make like a, a time note right now. We're 40 minutes in um, about how to make the color. Again, how to make this color is, is on my Patreon channel. So first thing we want to do is start with our 4011 reducer, which actually I've got, what's this? This is actually 4012 reducer. So I'm going to put the 4012 reducer in the bottom of my airbrush um, thing. And so... For those of you who've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I fill up to about where the elbow, <clears throat> excuse me, where the elbow is. And that's how I know that I've put enough reducer in. So I just fill it up until it hits right there. So reducer goes in first. And there it is, right at the elbow. Another thing I'll do is I'll spray it out just to make sure everything's happening all right before I put color in. Like I said, I just washed this before we started the stream, so. I haven't tested it at all, but it seems to be doing all right. Okay, so now all we have is the 4012 reducer. Next thing we're going to do is add some black, which, where is my black? Oh, it's right here. So let me put this airbrush down. I'm going to shake up my paint real quick before, something I always forget to do is shake up my paint before I start opening my cap. So I'm going to use black. I'm going to use Illustration White right here, Illustration White, Illustration Black, and some probably, I've got, uh, I don't even know how to say that word, Cerulean Blue, or I could probably use, my favorite thing to use is, uh, um, Cobalt Blue, but what I'm probably going to do is Cerulean Blue with a little bit of Violet. So let's shake all that stuff up real quick. Give it a really solid shake. Make sure everything is mixed up really well. Always hold your finger over the top, and if you're using one of these bottles, like this, put a rag over the top before you shake it. Always, 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 always. Doesn't matter if you're sure it won't get everywhere, because it will get everywhere. So I always put a rag over the top, and I shake it. Alex suggested we take Wi-Fi off of our phones to see if it helps. All right. So I'm shaking, shaking, shaking. And it does look like we're lagging out pretty good, so I apologize. I just turned the Wi-Fi off from my phone to hopefully that helps with it. Even this one, I'll put a rag over the top just to be careful. So I'm on the black right here. Well, now it's streaming from my phone. Again, I apologize for the lag, guys. And here's the red violet. Again, put the rag over the top, turn it upside down and shake it. Okay, so to make our first color, we're going to start with white. So here's a little bit of illustration white, and I'm just going to put in a few drops. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine drops. Now we'll do, let's say, two drops of black. And all of this will change. You guys will see. One, two. And we'll do a drop of blue. I'm going to do equal parts black and blue, so I'm going to do two drops of blue. Let's see, sorry, I was shaking hands here. I'm trying to squeeze it. One, two. And then I'm going to do one drop of red violet. One. So for those of you that don't know, if you look at my monochromatic stuff, it, it tr you guys, your eyes see it as black and white, but it's actually a cool black or cool gray. So it's, you, as you see, I put a little bit of color in my black and white just so it doesn't look so harsh. So off camera, let's see, I'm probably right here. You can kind of see the color. I'll spray off right here so you guys can see what my pattern looks like. But it is a touch blue. So I'm gonna put just one more drop of black in it and a little bit more white. So now we're at three drops of black. We'll be at 10 drops of white, two drops of blue, one drop of violet. There's one drop of black. And we'll do one more drop of white. Actually, we'll do two drops of white. So we'll be at 11 drops of white. One, two. All right, so I've got the gray that I'm after. So now what I need to do is get the transparency that I'm after. Man, it is lagging bad, guys. I'm sorry. It's like when I make quick movements, that's when it decides to lag. All right, so here's the secret weapon. 40-30. So 40-30 is a transparent base. It's called balancing clear, 40-30 balancing clear. The reason that's a secret weapon is because that's how you get that smooth flow. Like when you want your water-based paint to work kind of like a urethane-based paint and you want it to be very, very smooth, like really silky, silky smooth, this is this 4030, and I think they are uh, putting 4050 is actually, I don't know if they sell 4030 anymore. They actually sell 4050, which is a, uh, the same thing. Uh, that's your balancing clear. Uh, that's the secret weapon. That's how you get it to flow smoothly. And the reason it uh, makes it flow smoother is because um, it suspends the paint. So it, it, it's a better carrier for the paint. So the, the paint doesn't settle in it as, as much. So it's smoother. But I will say this. Once you put 4030 into this, once you add this to your paint, that paint cannot be saved anymore. It's only got a, a shelf life of maybe a day or so. So don't mix this paint, don't mix 4030 into separate bottles and think that it's gonna last forever because it will not. It will only last a few days. So once you add this to here, this is trash after a day or two. So we're gonna just do a pretty healthy amount. And then add a little more reducer. I'm going to turn it upside down, put a rag over the top, turn it upside down, and shake it. Hey, 
Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video, by the way, please like, subscribe, share, all those things. If you guys could share the video right now, if you guys have Facebook or any kind of social media, um, or maybe even share it to some of the uh, airbrush pages, the more people we get in here, you know, the more fun we can have. So, also, don't forget, there's a super chat if you want to donate, but here we go. It looks like we got 30 people in here right now. We're about to start the actual painting. Um, actually, you know what I need to do? I need to pull up my reference. I didn't even think about that. So, give me one second. I'm going to run over to my tablet, grab it real quick. I'm going to bring it over here, and we're going to start the actual painting. Move everything out of the way. Be right back. Okay, let me pull up this reference real quick. All right. Now, w one thing you can do if, I, I like to always have my reference about level with my eyes. So one thing you can do if you're like, so you can see that my reference is sitting kind of low. Uh, you can move it like that and that kind of does it well for you. Or another thing what I'll do is I'll use either a tablet stand or I'll put tape along the back of this and I'll tape my tablet up a little higher if I need it to be. That way, because what you want to do is you want to minimize your eyes travel. So if, once you start painting here, the more you can minimize the distance between your subject and your reference, the better you're going to be. But luckily with a tablet, I can just move it around. So I think we're gonna focus on his collar for the first part. I think I'm sitting on the cord. Of course, my airbrush is not spraying appropriately. Oh, there, that's why. So a lot of times you can have something stuck at the front which will keep your needle from... So Muddy Image wants to know if I'm having anything extra running. Let me check, let me make sure. It doesn't look like I have anything open, but I'll make sure for you guys. No, there's nothing else running on my tablet. I don't know what's lagging it out. Do you guys want me to try reopening a new stream or are you guys good with it? So Alex is watching this from another room right now. Oh, I'm using a an Iwata HPCS, which actually, yeah, it's it's spraying nice now. Um, so Alex is suggesting that we'll stream with an Ethernet cable next time. That way, that way we don't have so much lag. There we go. Uh, yeah, again, it's an Iwata HPCS. Uh, it's gold plated. Uh, I had a client one time who uh, was gold plating parts for his low rider, and I asked him to gold plate my airbrush, and he did. So this is quite a bit more tra transparent than I would like for the darker areas, but we're going to slow build this thing. My air compressor is a, a, a Silent Air. That's the brand Silent Air. My paint is Createx. So 
So this first layer, guys, what you want to do is really just focus on blocking in all of the bulk shapes. Um, so because I was able to give myself so much information using a graphite transfer, I can kind of zero in on certain things and just kind of make sure they're legit. Oftentimes what happens, especially in a beard like this, you'll get lost in all the details. And um, it's important that you mentally don't really think I'm painting a beard. You know, once you do that, you'll start getting kind of lost. You'll start scribbling a bunch of nonsense. What you need to mentally have in your head is here's a dark shape, here's a light shape, here's a medium tone, and so on. And then later on, you can detail it out. But for right now, just block out the dark parts of the shape. My airbrush is actually spraying pretty nice right now, which is uh, a luxury I haven't had a lot of in the past. Probably because I cleaned it using my airbrush cleaning kit. I know I'm not sponsored by these guys, but that is what I did. I used the Iwata cleaning kit. And they got the studio wipes in there. They got some nice cleaning solution. It's a really cool kit. Ninety percent of the time, guys, if your airbrush isn't spraying correctly, it's dirty. And the other percent of the time, you might have uh, there's the um, fluid nozzle tip right here. Sometimes that fluid nozzle tip will flower out, and that'll cause your airbrush not to spray correctly as well. In which case, you need to replace the fluid nozzle tip. Uh, Super Sicko says I usually use microns. Yes, I do usually use microns. Uh, the only reason I am not using microns currently is because I don't have a micron that is uh, in working order. Um, but one of my go-to is my Iwata Eclipse HPCS, and the reason why it's my go-to airbrush is because it's so user-friendly. And I honestly don't even know what the needle tip size is. I have no clue. I use it right out of the box. The only thing I changed about this airbrush at all was the... Um, Gold plating. Again, if you guys have any questions about what I'm doing right now, just post up your questions. I'd be happy to answer. If you want a very detailed um, tutorial of what I'm doing that's pre-recorded and uh, I filled out as much information as I could in there on my Patreon page, I have a fully detailed tutorial, 30-something 30, 30 part tutorial. So one thing I'll do if I do get lost in it, I can flip back and just see exactly what part I was on. Now that I know what part I'm on, I, it can help me like from getting lost. That's another th reason you want to have your reference like that. So you can make sense of that out of your scribbles a little bit easier. Again, if you guys are watching right now, if you're enjoying the video, I'd really appreciate it if you um, shared this on your social media and let everyone know what we were up to. Um, it helps out a lot. Um, I don't do a lot of edited videos anymore on YouTube because uh, it was very time consuming and very hard to do. I have a few edited videos, but um, I find that live streaming is so much more convenient for me. So I hope you guys enjoy the live streams. Also, not all my live streams are like serious tutorials like this. Sometimes we're just goofing off and having a good time. Um, sometimes I'm doing uh, like freehand portraits. I think I did a freehand portrait of Faith where we just spent six hours on stream. Pretty much just uh, we ordered some pizza. We had some beer. 
and Faith hang out, hung out with us, and uh, it was a good time. Faith's actually here right now hanging out. She's working on an oil painting right next to me. Oh, uh, what are you doing? Oh, she's beading. She's making a beaded medallion. I thought she, she's got an oil painting she's been working on too, so I thought maybe that's what she was working on. So Faith has been working on, uh, she's got a really cool little art space here at the tattoo sh shop. She's been putting that together and it's really cool. So we have a, half of our shop right now is just dedicated to art. Although once we have a little bit more of a full shop, I'll probably start tattooing more in my little area. Um, but right now I could tattoo and paint in my area and still have plenty of room. Again, if you guys are just tuning in, uh, our shop's called Eden's Edge Tattoo in Florida. Dunedin, Florida. And uh, yeah, if you guys are ever interested in getting tattooed and want to go on vacation, uh, hit me up. I'd love to. I'm going to check, so no comments yet. So, I'm just scribbling in the details of this beard right now. So it's going to look a little bulky at first. I don't put in like the actual beard details to make it look more like a beard until uh, a future layer. Now I'm going to flip that back, see where I am. Try to make a little bit of sense out of it. All right, I think I got it. Now I'll go like this. Again, if you guys have any questions, post them up. So, yesterday, Faith and I, uh, not only did we do the Dali Museum, but we hung out in downtown St. Pete, and that was a blast. It was a very good time. Um, I really enjoy living here in Florida. I know we kind of have a bad rap right now because of the COVID thing, uh, which is a total bummer. But uh, it's really, really fun here. Uh, like I said, we, we did the Dali Museum. We went and had dinner by the water. Um, that was really fun. Then we went and had a couple drinks up on this rooftop patio that overlooked Tampa Bay. Really beautiful. And then we went out on a pier. And out on the pier, there's this big net in the sky that has lights shining on it. And we just kind of laid in the grass and looked up at the net uh, I guess it's this just it's just this giant huge net that goes across this big um, grassy um, park and we just lay down on the grass and you look up at the net like it was it was nice you'll notice that I'm I'm filling in some of the background as I go um, that's why I don't need to use stencils. I kind of chop in some of that as I go, and then I'll get closer. So if you see, I fill in, you know, I'll do some broad details like that, and then I'll get in closer and do some of these sharper details. And there's really never a need to use um, a shield or anything like that. I always say if you're getting lost in a certain area, just jump to an area that you do know. 
that's a big thing when I'm teaching classes and when I'm teaching people. A lot of times people, they'll get lost in this little area and then they don't know where to go. And I'm like, just stop when you're lost, move to something that you do know, and then that will all start to make sense a little bit later. Just don't force it, you know? Don't, don't get stressed out and go like, oh my God, I don't know where I am, I don't know what's going on. Just, just stay calm and comfortable and then just, I don't know, just kind of let things together as they, as they do. The main thing to remember is just, it'll get there when it gets there, don't force it. The minute you start trying to force the painting, that's when you overwork it. And that happens a lot in my classes. A lot of the, my time spent in my classes is trying to keep people from overworking the painting. Because they, they just sit there and they're just trying to force it. It's like, I'm painting a mouth, I need it to look like a mouth, it needs to look like a mouth, it needs to make sense to me. And it really doesn't. If you just paint the shapes as you see them, all of a sudden the mouth just appears, you know? Like right now, I'm painting one of his teeth, I think, or maybe even a part of his beard, but it doesn't matter in my mind. Only thing that matters is put the, sh put the darks in where they are. I'm gonna back up here in a minute after I've been in this area for a while, just painting shapes in my mind. In fact, I'm talking to you guys most of the time. So my mind isn't even thinking about mouth or um, anything like that or beard it's just I'm just over here mimicking what I see so all of a sudden you'll take a step back and then boom there's a there's a mouth or a beard or whatever just right there now on the f on the further layers on the top layers that's when you can start putting in the details a little more purposefully but on these bottom layers you're just blocking everything in And in some of my other videos, I show you guys freehand techniques uh, where you can do this stuff uh, without a stencil. Um, so this is just my stencil technique. It's just one of many techniques that I use. Again, I, I used to use more shields and um, those types of things. And then over the years, I just started using them less and less. Uh, Brady says, don't draw what your brain sees, draw what your eyes see. That is, that is absolutely correct. Now, if you were drawing a cartoon or something like that, that's different. But when you're drawing a portrait, it's really important that you trust your eyes. You want to look at your reference every 10 seconds. Like, not even 10 seconds, that's, that's too much time. You want to look at your reference almost every three to four seconds. So your eyes, if you guys, just, if there was just a camera on my eyes only, you would see my eyes going like this. I'd paint, 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 eyes. You know, and I'm just bouncing. And they're coming back like that. About that frequently. That's very important. If I, when I'm teaching classes, I'll notice people will be fixated in on this one little spot. And they'll just be here the whole time. And I'll watch their head never move, and I'll watch their eyes, and their eyes will never, never move. And then I'll stop them, and I'll be like, hey, are you looking at your reference? And they'll be like, huh? Because, you know, they're not even focused. They'll catch them off guard, huh? And I'm like, are you looking at your reference? Are you paying attention? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, well, I haven't seen your eyes move, and I counted 20 seconds. And they're like, oh. And I'll be like, you need to have your eyes traveling consistently. And, again, the less you can travel your eyes, so if, if you can move the reference this close and put it this close so that things are this close to each other, now your eyes barely have to travel at all. So there's a lot less information being lost between here and there. That is very, very important. I don't think enough people put value on that lesson enough. So again, this is when, when accuracy is important, especially when doing a memorial portrait, accuracy is very important. Minimize your eyes travel. Now, the only reason I don't keep my reference this close is because that overspray starts kind of blasting into my reference so I move it just a little off to where my overspray isn't getting in the way 
But even right now, my overspray really isn't in the way comparatively, so I could actually have the reference that close. Sorry, my airbrush is kind of acting up a little bit right now. Let me give it a shake. Oh, it's because my... I got to free that thing up. Hold on just a second, guys. A lot of times... There we go. The, the vent hole was a little clogged, but I got it out. Okay. Oh yeah, now it's spraying really well. That's another thing that it can keep your airbrush from spraying really nicely is if your the vent hole on the top is clogged. And if it sounds like I was kind of harping on the reference thing, uh, I do that because it, it, in my experience, when I teach that to people, it doesn't seem like they take me that seriously. So I try to, I try to push it really heavy to make sure people understand the value of that lesson. You'll notice that I'm hopping around quite a bit on this painting. That that's very helpful when you're trying to um, have the Im you know you, you want to see the image kind of just kind of fall into focus all at one time. If you sit here and you micro detail one little spot for too long, you'll 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 get real lost. So I I jump around a lot. Try to work everything all at one time. You guys see my head moving, I'm checking the, the comments there. So now I'm getting a little too close to my little reference, so I'm, I'm gonna come over here to the other side of his face. If you see me spraying off, I'm just making sure that this, the, the paint continues to spray smoothly. Again, we're only in the blocking stages of this painting, so it's really not that important that um, everything is perfect in this stage. The, our goal is just to see the image kind of come into focus. I will say a lot of times when you're, um, I don't know, when you're an artist, a lot of people put speed as a value over quality. So a lot of people will be like, oh man, that's slow. Why are you working so slow or something like that? I don't think speed is something 
that is, I think people put too much value in speed. Because to me, I think the most important thing is to take your time, relax, get it done when you get it done. That's why doing like art for money is a, such a hard thing to do. It's because you have to put a value on every single move that you make. And I don't know, that's hard when you're a serious artist, for me anyway. Because I, I don't like my quality to be dictated by speed or money. Even though like when it comes to tattoos it very much is, but I try to add that I try to add that time into my quote, you know. If I'm slower than other people, I'm very transparent about that. I'm like, look, I'm probably slower than, than what you're used to, but I want you to understand that it's because I value the quality over speed. And if you're okay with that, then we can do business. But if you're not okay with that, maybe I'm not your guy. And I feel like if you're upfront about that, um, people are very understanding, especially when it comes to tattoos. It's a little bit of a harder sell when it comes to airbrushing because most of the time you're painting like a car or a motorcycle and you know people want a deal or a bargain or whatever but i still think if your quality is if your quality is good then then people will pay for it so my motto is just especially nowadays since most of my money's made in tattoos and not with airbrushing um, I just take my time and it, and it takes what it takes the end like if it takes me 30 hours or it takes me 12 hours or it takes me 5 hours or 40 hours it doesn't matter to me what matters is did I do a good job you know did I put in the effort that this painting deserves my airbrush is being funny I think it's collecting I don't know I'll have to mess with it um, but anyway Super Sicko says I did the glasses freehand. Yeah, I do everything freehand. Always. So if you guys can see in my reference, there's a shadow right here where you can't make out if that's an eyebrow or a shadow from the hat or the edge of the glasses. It's not important in your mind that you make that distinction. It's more important that you just match the shadow, match the shape. Again, if any of you watching are tattoo artists as well, this is the exact same thing in tattoos. A lot of what I teach and my airbrushing translates to any form of art. It doesn't matter if you're using an airbrush or a pencil or a tattoo machine, it doesn't matter. And I'm sorry about the lag again, guys. I think it starts lagging out when I move fast. Oh, uh, that's probably what it is. Faith says that there's lightning close. And we have had a lot of weather lately. Oh, uh, she said she just got another lightning alert as she said that, so that's probably what it is. We have bad weather here right now. So again, I apologize. We, it's just that, you know, can't predict the weather, you know? So, I don't know, I'll mess with that later. I was going to say my pencil lines are a little heavy in the forehead, but I'm going to use my future um, layers to blend that out.
And again, I apologize for repeating myself a lot, but if you guys want to see this technique and an easier to consume um, way, I have it all on my Patreon page. Uh, exact same technique that I'm using right now is in detail and 30 parts. 30 something parts, I'm not quite sure exactly how many. Is it what, 31? Something like that. Alex actually edited that thing for us, so everyone thank Alex. Alex is our apprentice here at the shop. He's learning to tattoo. And so if you guys are struggling, if you're trying my technique out and you're having a hard time, Alex feels your pain because he gets to be right here. And <laughs> I, he, in real time, I get to see him struggle. But you know what? Perseverance is very important. So one thing I might do later in the portrait is uh, reference, I don't know, reference something where I can get a little more detail out of it. This is, because the reference is so blurry, there's not a lot of detail to be had. And that's unfortunate. So I might have to, uh, like, I'll Google, I'll Google something that I think looks similar, like a person that looks similar to this uh, person. And um, I'll try to find the details that are missing and just another reference. Sometimes you can just look at a celebrity reference uh, and you can find some details that are missing in your, in your current reference. Because as long as you get the likeness, which is, you know, you don't need all those details to get the likeness right. So if you needed to see like eyelashes or pores or something like that, you can find that sort of thing in, you know, any human reference. Especially you can find it one that's close. So if you're painting somebody and you're like, oh man, he looks just like such and such celebrity, well, maybe that's a good place to start. He actually looks like a, a friend of mine from back home. So I might look up my friend's uh, Instagram page or his, uh, um, what do you call it, Facebook page and see if he has any photos that are similar. Maybe pick up some references there. Like I said, this is my dad's, well actually this, this is my dad's friend's uh, kid and um, I really don't know a lot about it past that but um, maybe I can find his his Facebook page and find some references there
I would consider what I'm doing right now uh, like an underpainting. So it's, it's just the bones of the painting. The real painting starts after I get this all sorted out. Uh, Super Seiko says the Patreon channel is filled. What does that mean? Like it's filled? filled? Did you like fill out a thing? I just saw that somebody, Ty Frederick, just pledged $5 on Patreon. If you guys are watching right now, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, SFCO AWOL says... Um, do you have to prep the panel if you walk away for a few days? No, you don't. You could walk away for a few years and still not have to do anything. Maybe clean it, but no, you're fine. I actually have quite a few panels back here that I've been live streaming that I need to come back to. Maybe after I finish a few things, I'll do just like four or five sessions that are just me finishing up some past live streams that I haven't gotten a chance to finish, finish up yet. So like right behind me, there's, uh, let's see, there's a dog portrait that I was doing for, for one of our patrons um, that I need to finish. I have a painting actually up there that I think is about maybe two years old possibly that I need to finish. Maybe when Mondo, a friend of mine, uh, he was my tattoo mentor, Mondo, he um, started the painting with me and he's supposed to be visiting, but due to COVID and all this other nonsense, he hasn't had a chance yet. Um, but if he does get a chance to visit, maybe he and I will live stream and we'll finish that painting. Uh, yeah. Oh, super sicko. That's Ty. All right, man. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, we, we definitely try to fill it up with a lot of good content. Do you want me to call you Ty from now on or super sicko? I'll just keep super sicko. That's easier to, to remember. But thanks, Ty. Well, I tell you, when I started this YouTube channel and it started to grow back in the day, it was a lot. It was a lot of stress. <laughs> you wouldn't think it. I don't know. Maybe you would. It was, it was a lot of stress trying to keep up with it. It was something I didn't anticipate at all, like how much work it would be. That's why this live streaming is so cool. It's so much more low stress, especially since we have uh, our own tattoo studio and Alex is here to help. Definitely helps out a lot. It's like I look at YouTube now and I look at all the people that are like professional YouTubers and I look at how much work it took for them to become a professional YouTuber. And it becomes pretty unattractive to me at that point because I'm like, man, I like being a tattooer and I like being an airbrush artist and I like 
having my life and, and all these things. And if I were to, I don't know, I think about taking taking my YouTube channel to that degree and then I just kind of get turned off. I'm like, nah, I don't know. That seems like a lot of work. <laughs> it's, it's a full-time job, that's for sure. I do, however, if live streaming can become a bigger thing, I would love for that. Like, I know how, like, um, a lot of people, uh, you know, you remember when podcasts were a new thing and no one really paid it a lot of attention. Now you got guys like Joe Rogan who run the, the world with his podcasts. So, I don't know, maybe live streaming becomes the same thing in the future. In which case, like and subscribe, and I'll keep streaming. Let's see. Ty says, uh, oh, I already talked to him. What's up, crazy? What do you say here? Uh, what PSI am I running right now? And yeah, my stream is lagging. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. I think we're going to try to, next stream, we're going to try to use an Ethernet cord. I, Faith and I are assuming that it's due to the weather here. Uh, there seems to be some storms and things going on, so that might be causing the lagging. So I apologize for that. As far as the PSI is concerned, let me check for you. Give me one second. I just eyeball it. Yeah, I usually end up somewhere around 24 to 25 PSI, um, sometimes lower.
Yeah, if you guys, uh, again, if you go to the Patreon page, I talk a lot more in depth about even my hand movements. I know I have some hand movements that are um, probably unique, I guess. Um, and I talk a lot about that. Um, I, I didn't start with as like a t-shirt painter or anything like that. I started as a painting on motorcycles and cars. And so my technique is quite a bit different uh, than say somebody who started off with t-shirts. Um, uh, I, I do a lot of texturing and different things. A lot of um, like uh, kind of like little bumping, like uh, little trigger bumps and, and uh, texturing methods that I talk quite a bit about in the Patreon video. Uh, I got a lot of my technique from Corey St. Clair and then um, I picked up a lot more along the way from other friends and artists and then a lot of it, a good majority of it was just trial and error. Just kind of, I don't know. I think a lot of people, they, they are like, oh, how do you move your hand or how do you use your trigger or whatever and they get too hung up on that and not really understand that, you know, just be you. It's more important, are you getting the results that you're after uh, rather than, you know, how are you pushing the trigger? But I do share that information for those of you that want to know about it. As you can see here, like, I'm getting this thin line. You can see that my airbrush is almost parallel with the substrate or with my clay board. So you can see that Instead of doing this, I do this and I get a thinner line. So you see how I'm sideways like that? And I'm just painting into the line that way. That's something I didn't know I was unique for until people pointed it out to me. Um, I was actually just doing it one day and then somebody mentioned that I should teach people that and I didn't, I didn't even understand that it was a unique thing. That's why I don't use the uh, side-mounted cups, actually. I, I, I got in a, a conversation one time online with somebody who was asking what airbrush I use, and I was telling them about this one, the HPCS, and then someone else had jumped in and, and said that they should use the side-mounted cup, the one that mounts here on the side, and I was like, no, don't use that. And the other person was kind of making a little bit of an argument about it, and I was like, well, the reason I don't use it is because of that. Like, I couldn't do this if I had a cup bumping into my clay board the whole time. So I like the top mounted cup. Now the argument that was being made, this depends on the style that you're using, the argument that was being made is that you can see down the middle of your airbrush better if you have a side mounted cup. Well, I don't look down the top of my airbrush, I look down the side of my airbrush. So it doesn't do me any good to have a side mounted cup. So it serves me the same purpose to look down the side of my airbrush uh, other than somebody who say looks down the top of their airbrush. So it's a preference thing. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to that. It's just a preference. But uh, the, the reason I prefer top mounted is the reason I just said. You can see how my airbrush is cocked to the side the whole time. Again, I look, look at me, I'm just looking down the side of it not the top. So I, th I think it's kind of um, counterproductive to say that one airbrush is better than another because of this or because of that. I think it's unique to whoever's using the airbrush, whether it doesn't matter, you know, are you getting the result that you're after? It doesn't matter if you're using HPCS or Micron or a TH or it doesn't matter what you're using, um, what brand you're using, are you getting the results that you're after? That's the most important thing.
truthfully, I think I've only ever used two airbrushes in my entire airbrush career. Now, when I started, I think I was using a TH because I wasn't really good at pushing the top trigger. So I come from painting cars. I had a car painting background, so I needed something that was more like a pull trigger. Well, pull trigger, you have very little movement. You don't have as much control over the pattern. So I quickly graduated from this to this as soon as I was comfortable doing it. And ever since I graduated to this style of airbrushing with the top uh, dual action airbrush, um, I've only ever used an HPCS and an Iwata Micron. That's it. Um, and both of them, I prefer the top, uh, top fed airbrush. A lot of people always ask me about my nozzle size and all these other things. I honestly have never even looked into it. I've never, I have no idea what it is. I just know that I've, I use the Micron for very, very tiny details. Problem with the Micron is I break it consistently. And I use the Eclipse because it's the most well-rounded airbrush. And it's the best airbrush for getting replacement parts for me because I ha always have a Hobby Lobby local to me. And anytime my airbrush is broken, I can always get parts. Or if it's completely just, you know, broke beyond repair, I'll just go buy another one. And I do that often as well. Or usually I'll steal face airbrush and then I'll go buy another one. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I don't know how many airbrushes I bought for Faith and then I end up stealing them. Probably like five. And then she'll always argue, like, or she'll say, like, this one's mine. Don't touch it. I, that never. That never <laughs> I always take it. One thing I know, when I finish this bottom layer, this is what everyone always says. This is, like I said, this is the underpainting. So many people, they often say like, oh, I would have been fine with just that. And they always want me to, they always think I should just stop at the underpainting because they think it's enough. And uh, I, hopefully you guys stick with me long enough to see why, I don't, why it's not enough. And um, I, I don't know. I like to finish it to completion. And I like to have like at least four or five layers. So it doesn't matter how good my my bottom layer is, I don't leave it there. I don't just go, oh, that's good enough. That's, that's what it looks like, and then move on. I, I, good isn't good enough, in my opinion. I want it to look great. And so the only way to do that is, is my entire layering process. So I never listen if somebody's like, no, that's fine. That's good. Just leave it there. I never listen. I always have it's a done when it's done kind of attitude. Now, as I get to the top, because you guys can't see off camera, but I've got the paper, the reference tape just above here, it's best that I stop before I get close to that. So I'm going to, I, I don't want any overspray causing a line where my paper is taped to uh, my panel. So I'm just gonna work down now, not go too far up. And I'll just do the top parts of the painting after I pull the reference off.
What's that? Yeah, my compressor is a little junked up because I left it in the back of, uh, I did this twice actually. I left it in the back of the truck while we traveled long distances, I don't know, maybe even different states. And uh, it's fallen over quite a few times. So it leaks and it's a little more noisy, but it's still pretty damn quiet for, for an air compressor. Like I said, it's a silent air brand air compressor and it's super quiet. It makes about as much noise as your um, as your refrigerator does because it uses the same motor that a refrigerator does. Very quiet. But I do plan on getting a, n a new one eventually. I just haven't. This is my old faithful right now. It's funny about tools like that. Sometimes you get tools that for whatever reason, even though they shouldn't work anymore, they do. I have friends that have bought brand new air compressors and they can never get them working. And somehow you just sometimes land on that one tool that just works every time you get it. That's like can openers. Yeah. Can openers, yeah. Whatever can opener my parents had like would still work for until I was a grown adult. Oh, yeah. But if I buy a KitchenAid can opener, it's going to break. So for those of you who didn't hear Faith, she said, she said that for whatever, this is the same with me too. Our parents had the same can opener for our entire childhood. Uh, hold on, my looks like my stream is a little more laggy than it should be. But um, yeah, the, she said that she had a can opener and I did too. My parents said the same thing that we had the same can opener through our whole, entire childhood and then um, for whatever reason, what, how many can openers have we owned now? Probably like, like five can openers and they consistently break. Um, even when we buy expensive ones. Yeah, I bought a KitchenAid one because so I was like, I'm not buying cheap ones anymore because they just break. And I'm broke too. So it looks like our bit rate is dropping significantly. Um, all right. So sorry about that, guys. I really do apologize for our stream quality today. We haven't had a problem with it in the past, and we've used the exact same internet, so it has to be the weather. Oh, yeah. So Faith reminded me that the uh, power went out in our entire block the other day. So who knows what's going on around here. But like I said, if I have to, I'll get better internet. But I think once we get the ethernet cord hooked up next time, we probably won't have an issue anymore. Hopefully. Hopefully. Every once in a while, go ahead and turn your airbrush upside down, or even better, use a rag. Turn your airbrush upside down and shake it up. That agitates it, so that way none of the particles or the little, you know, pigment particles settle at the bottom. So I just turn it upside down. And I'll shake it a little, and I'll go ahead and free that top up a little. Just kind of using a toothpick and just clearing that vent. And there it is, spring just like a dream again. It's it's easy to forget to do that.
Faith is saying there's more lightning alerts, so yeah, it's got to be the problem. How's everybody doing? Drop a comment, guys, if you guys are in here checking it out, if you're uh, close to your computer anyway. Let me know you're here, paying attention. A little what's up or hand wave emoji or whatever. Super sick says it's like a class right now. Well, it is a class because if you were in my class, this is exactly what you'd be getting. In fact, the first part of my class, I do exactly what we're doing right now. I start with just a demo. So that's how I open the class up. I, um, I, do, a, I do a quick demo for everybody and I quickly run through my whole technique as fast as I can. And then, uh, and then I'm like, all right, cool, do it. And then everyone does really great and that's the end of class. No. Um, yeah, then I after I do a little quick demo, then then I break it down into little like bite-sized parts and then everyone kind of focuses on one part and then um I help everyone through. Uh and most of the time the biggest thing people struggle with, like I, I try to mention it in these streams, the things I see most commonly, but a lot of times it's just trigger control. I mean, you'd be surprised to see how many people come to class and they really struggle with just pulling the trigger on the airbrush. And um so I'm hoping that through videos like this, you guys can get that handled. And then if, the, if you do come to one of my classes in the future, you'll have that part under control and we can start focusing on the things that you might be struggling with the most. What's up, Raul? And right now we don't have any classes on schedule due to the COVID and all that whatnots and what have you. But uh, hopefully something soon um maybe even a private class i don't know if you guys would you guys want to come to florida and do some private classes um because we might do something like that here i know that i was planning on doing a private class in california at vatican studios that's the home of bishop rotary and um we just never could get it together and we still we still have plans to we really want to do it but we need the demand to be up. We need every, enough people to want to do it. And then um, once we get that, then, um, you know, we'll organize something. But it keeps falling through, and I take a lot of responsibility for that. But um, we'll get it together one day, and we'll have one there in California. Um, in case you're wondering, um, Vatican Studios is in Orange County, California. So that's definitely on the to-do list as well as one here in Florida. Uh, but we'll probably get to the Florida one probably sooner. I definitely, I, I'm guilty of setting out to do things and then for whatever reason I can't get them done and I always feel super guilty about it but the intention's always good. I, I definitely do a lot of classes with the Airbrush Art Circus um, those are kind of not happening at the moment, but, and then if you guys want me to come to other countries, so I get a lot of requests to go and teach in different countries and it's always a different one. I'll get a, a question, you know, somebody will say, if you're ever in Sweden or if you're ever in Germany or if you're ever in, you know, Costa Rica or something like that. And the problem is I always get one person asking that and it's like, well, I can't just go to Costa Rica for one person. So if y'all want me to come to your country, if it's far away, you, you got to kind of help me out. And if you can get five to 14 to 15 people together, um, then I could afford to be able to do something like that. So 
me coming to your country to teach a private class or a, a week-long class or whatever is really a matter of organization. And I know that I can't organize that. Like, I can't just post up, like, you know, I'll be in Sweden for a week and get enough people because I'm not from Sweden. So somebody from there would have to organize it. I have been to San Antonio, Texas, that's for sure. Uh, we love San Antonio, Faith and I. Yeah, you guys have noticed, he, he was mentioning how fast this starts to look like something. Have you noticed that I've been talking the whole time and not really paying attention to what I was doing? That's because too many people are like, eye, nose, mouth, whatever. They don't understand that if you just mimic what you see, it just starts happening. Uh, granted, I have had a boatload of practice, but... I don't know. Not that I'm not paying attention. I don't mean it like that. Like, I'm just saying that uh, people put their attention sometimes in the wrong places as far as that. They, they get too entrenched. Like they're sitting here like freaking out over every little detail. Um, and making it harder than it needs to be. But again, admittedly, I've done this now for, I think I started in 2008. Um, so it's I, I've got quite a bit of practice. So as with anything, the more you practice something, the easier it gets. And I don't think I've ever grown bored with doing portraits. And in fact, I, I know I have never grown bored with doing portraits. It's one of my favorite things to do. It doesn't matter if it's a tattoo portrait. It doesn't matter if it's an airbrush portrait. I just enjoy doing them always. Now, finding the time to do them, that's another thing altogether. So uh, David says he wants to try to set up a class for me in San Antonio. Yeah, if you can get enough people together. I mean, I've already done, what, how many, like two or three classes, something like that in San Antonio? I'm not quite sure. I think I've done two classes for sure in San Antonio. But yeah, if you want to set up another one, I'm, I'm all about it. A lot of times uh, we try to get Mondo to come out. Uh, Mondo teaches my classes with me. Uh, Mondo is the one that taught me how to tattoo. He was also an excellent airbrush artist, and he'll like, like, if we have enough uh, students, then we fly him out, too, and he kind of assists. He's like the, the assistant teacher. Not to mention, he's a little better at certain things than I am. So, like, sometimes the way that I explain things is not suited for certain, uh, certain students. So Mondo tries to uh, catch that part. So if... He notices there's a student that maybe is needing a little extra attention or maybe I said something um, that he can probably say differently, then he'll, he'll jump in for that. And if you guys want to know who Mondo is, uh, his name is Mondo Chromatic on Instagram. That's one of my best friends in the art world. Probably my, one of my best friends, period. Other than Brady, of course. Um, but um, he's, he's helped me 
so much um, with just, I don't know, just getting into this airbrush, getting into tattoos and, I don't know, and everything. He's, he's, he's a really great guy and a, and a fantastic artist. David wants to know if there's a price. Uh, Air Todd says, what's up, Faith? Air Todd says, how much do I get paid? I'm not going to tell you how much I get paid for the art circus. One million dollars. That's how much I get paid. But um, w what is the price for doing... See, I don't want to talk about price over the thing. I don't know. I know that the students pay, what, like, is it like $600 or something? Yeah, it depends on... Um, oh, like, if people ask them, like, what... Yeah, what what you should charge. Well, I know that the art circus charges something like six hundred dollars, if I'm not mistaken. And then we always have a class with about what, like. Well, it also depends too. On, it completely depends on the, the cost of going into it, like the location if you have to rent that. Um, yeah. So the location. Price, yeah. So. If it's catered. Yeah. So it's not as simple as just um, paying for a class. You have to have the supplies. For the students, you have to have the location, facilities, air supply, paint supply, which a lot of times I get that uh, sponsored. But even if I do get it sponsored, that's a huge chore to even make that happen because you have to organize with Iwata and you have to organize with Createx and you have to organize with the art circuits. Because a lot of times, even if I'm doing private lessons, I'm still having the art circus helps me out a lot with that. You know, so I do a lot through the art circuits where they do their where they do everything. But then sometimes if I do something that's independent, I can go to the art circus and say, hey, guys, can I do this independent thing? And then they'll help me out with supplies. Either way, there's a lot involved. So a ticket price of, say, $600 at the art circus is very doable. I'd have to really think about the math if there was a ticket price that's the same thing if I was doing it on my own. So it's, there's just a lot of logistics involved. So again, I'm highly willing, very, very, very willing to travel anywhere to do classes. It's the logistics that are the, um, the real chore. That's why I always ask if anyone wants to take on that responsibility, I'm more than happy, more than happy, because I don't do it for profit. I really don't. I only ever try to make enough money to justify doing it, you know, taking that time off of work. Because I could just stay home and make money and be fine. Uh, but I enjoy doing it. I, I teach classes because I really, really enjoy doing it. So, so, again, it's just about making enough money to justify doing it. Oh, I know, Air Todd. I was just giving you crap. <laughs> he says, uh, I only ask because... Uh, I, I, I was just giving, I was just messing with you because we were, I didn't want to talk about that sort of thing online. Uh, I don't think it's fair to talk about money, like how much you make, but I get it. I get it. <laughs> so d d I wasn't getting on to you for real. I was just being a punk. It's a I will say, though, if there was an instance of a private lesson where I didn't have to bring anything, all I have to do is show up and kind of coach you through, you know, that obviously can be done. But still, you know, there's a plane ticket involved and all kinds of other things. But I'd be willing to do it, especially if Faith can come with. Especially if we can turn it into a vacation, you know, like... Faith and I love traveling, so 
if we can do it just to cover the cost of like a vacation and we do like a little one-on-one -on -one class, that would be reason enough to do it as well. You know, just seeing a new city or town or even if it's a whole country, you know, if we travel outside of the country. Now, that would be pretty expensive, though, if you flew me out to another country to do it, but I'd be willing to do it. I know a lot of times what people will do is they'll get with their local magazines and things like that. So, and that's how a lot of it happens. Um, I've got a lot of friends that have traveled overseas for uh, tattoo or for airbrush classes. And um, usually there's a magazine or something like that that sponsors the event. Um, I've noticed there's a lot in Europe, a lot in Russia. A lot in um, different countries. I, I think Brady there's... Said he's going to oh, Brady's going to sleep? Mm -hmm. Good night, Brady. <laughs> Brady texted. He's been here hanging out. Anyway. Brady's going to sleep. What time is it there? Ten fourteen. He doesn't jump, Brian. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He's uh, he's oh, on wait. COVID right now. He has, he has kids. He has children's. All right, Brady, tend to your children. Actually, it is gonna get kind of getting late. Where are we at right now? Eleven fourteen. Hey guys, it's eleven fourteen right now uh, here in Florida. We're gonna go till eleven thirty, so we got fifteen minutes left, and then I'll pick this stream up again. Um, Let's see, I'm tattooing tomorrow. Uh, I might have some time after that, possibly. If not, then I, I think there's time on Thursday, possibly. So I will, uh, again, if you guys hit the bell on this stream, uh, you will be notified when I get back on it. And I'm going to pick up, because i got to get this one done for my dad, and it's really important that I do that. So I'll start the stream again um, sometime this week. It's hard for me to say again because I tattoo during the day and I, I, I'm pretty busy, but I definitely have to get this one done, so. And then after I finish this one again, I'll be back on the mermaid painting, uh, which is actually sitting behind me right now. Uh, we are currently painting the hair of the mermaid um, so I'm gonna pick that up right there and we'll just keep chipping away as I told everybody um, the mermaid is something that I think we'll just continue to work on until it's finished I don't no idea how long it'll take me to finish that thing it's definitely gonna take more work than I put into any other painting and then uh, after the mermaid, I'll probably switch to a lot more easier paintings like this one. Um, that way I can get, you know, get them done in a smaller amount of time. Air Todd says they haven't closed this down again. Not yet, but who knows? Hey, if they close this down again, you guys are going to see me painting a lot. Because that's all I got. So... You'll see me here all the time painting. Then that Patreon page, <laughs> we might have to activate it up again. I mean, it's still going, but uh, as far as money is concerned. Because when they close this down, man, they take away our entire livelihood. Like, we have no way of making money. Like, I'm blessed to have um, airbrushing as something I can do, but... Um, man, it is not fun when they close us down and... Basically, you're just kind of praying that you don't have to close your doors permanently. Like, 
that's for real. Like that's that's no bull right there. Like that's legit. Like when when they when they close us down for COVID, man, we, we it's not fun. And and I, I'm the kind of person like I wouldn't say I'm a workaholic or anything like that, but I I need to feel I need to work. You know, if I'm not working, I don't feel valuable and I and I feel depressed. So like, you know. That's why I'll come down here and paint and do this type of thing because I, I just need to be doing something every day. Otherwise, I, I, it's definitely, it definitely uh, uh, does a number on me mentally to not be able to, to work. Especially do what I, what I work so hard to be good at, which is, um, you know, doing these types of things. But luckily, I can still paint while COVID is going on. So if they shut us down again, I might just really get my paintings turned up to 11, you know? I definitely have plenty of paintings to do. And I'll probably start selling um, prints. I might even take on some commissions, I don't know. Yeah, by the way, if you guys are watching this, Faith was making a good point. Everyone's very supportive about support local artists and stuff. If I know that my friends in California, uh, my tattoo friends especially, they are not allowed to tattoo right now. So Mondo, we were talking about Mondo earlier, one of my best friends in, in, in the business, and he's not allowed to work right now. Uh, so... You can have a great time to buy uh, artwork. Yeah. Now is a really, really great time to buy artwork from... Book appointments for the future. Yeah, you can book appointments. Anything you can do to support your local artists, and, and you guys included, everyone, we're all local artists. We're all in this together. But if you're in a more fortunate situation than, than your fellow artists, then now is a great time to support them. Like right now, we are fortunate enough to be able to um, still work. But, I mean, if you guys are hip to the news, you know that they're really dogging Florida right now pretty hard. So, um, who knows? They might shut us down again. And if they do, you know, what can you do? So, uh, but I do know that they did shut down California. So, if you guys have friends in California, support them. Looks like it's raining outside. Yeah, so Air Todd was confirming that they've closed down California. Yeah, so rest so it's the same in Florida. Uh, restaurants are able to move out into the parking lots right now, uh, so that they can uh, maintain social distancing. Which is weird. I mean, I don't I don't want to get political at all, but it is funny that you know I know that tattoos cannot maintain social distancing. But we do a pretty damn good job of maintaining cleanliness. You know, a lot better than Walmart. But yet Walmart seems to be able to stay open. Granted, I, I, I still agree that we should all do our part. So I'm not complaining as far as that's concerned. Like, I'm all for um, sacrificing for the greater good. It just hurts. That's all. Well, I also think, you know, if we're sacrificing big businesses, should have to sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah, if we're hurting, why does Walmart get to just you know, Walmart and Amazon just get to own. So whatever. I guess we'll all hurt and they can just make all our money. But wait, that's all I'll say about it. I don't want to start a conversation, to be honest. So... 
Yeah, they're starting to pull back again. They will because the numbers are not getting any better. That's the problem. Every day I look at the news, it looks like they just get worse. And again, like I said, I, I don't want to act like I know anything because I don't as far as, you know, the, you know, the greater good or, or, or what's right and what's wrong. But um, it's just hard times. I think we're all in it. The whole world seems to be in it, you know, having a hard time. The only ones that are really having an awesome time are Amazon and Walmart and, you know, that kind of shit. They seem to be just doing peachy. So I, 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 I do think that's probably not fair, but, you know, what can you do? Leon says, uh, should tax them. I know, we should tax Walmart and Amazon. Like, especially if they shut down the country. I don't know. I don't want to get into it. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not educated. But I, I do think it's fair. If you're going to take money away from all of us regular folk, you know, if you're going to take all of our livelihood away, fine. That means Walmart and Amazon need to... Uh, need to take a, a hit too and, and uh, you know, do their part as well. I mean, that's why they're shutting us down, right? So that we can spread, you know, so we can do our part to uh, not get anyone sick. So we all have to sacrifice. So we're sacrificing our money, our income, our livelihood, uh, our bottom dollar for the greater health of the world, okay, that doesn't stop with Amazon, like, but anyway, no, I'm not going to talk about it anymore, <laughs> I'll get too far into the weeds on that topic, and I don't, I don't really want to. I am very thankful that I'm able to work right now, though, I can tell you that. Oh, I see what you're saying. So Leon Artistry was 
Yeah. Um, Air Todd says, is this my dad's friend? This is my dad's friend's son, as far as I, I, I understand. I, 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 know it might, I, know, I know the friend, and I know one of his sons. I don't think I've met this person before. That's why I'm not talking a lot about him. I don't want to disrespect um, him by speaking. I, I, I just want to do my job, which is, um, which is to create a piece of art for his family. But I do know his family, and um, they are one of the most, the, one of my biggest supporters, even from before. Like when I started airbrushing for my dad, ten plus years ago or whenever that was, um, his dad was one of our biggest supporters. And I hope, and I, I hope I even got that correct. I, I just. I don't like to speak about it. I just, my dad asked me to do it and I accepted um, because um, they've been very supportive of me and my artwork and it's for a good reason. And um, like I said, I, I still, I have to do one for my sister's friend as well. I've really had a hard time finding time for that one. Um, it's unfortunate. You know, I think it's a sad thing and a very serious thing when somebody passes away. And um, I, I just do my part, and my part is to make this, this, these pieces of art. And then once I'm done with it, I, I let the family, you know, use it for their healing and for their memory. Like I said, again, when I, the first time I did one of these memorial portraits, I did not understand at the time that I was doing the portrait the impact that that would make on the family until I handed it to the family. And once they received the painting and I saw what it did for them um, and their coping and their healing, it was a very, very heavy and intense thing. And it's been that way every time I've done one of these paintings. So it's a very serious thing for me. I don't take them on very often. Um, because it's such a heavy thing. Uh, I, it's, it's not that I don't enjoy it, I absolutely enjoy it. It's just, um, yeah. I usually do them for free. I, haven't, I, don't, I can't recall ever charging for one of these. Um, but I, I don't know. So Air Todd wants to know if Eden's Edge is just my work or if it's everyone's work. Um, right now, I think it's just my work on there. I think uh, Alex's work is on there. Alex is our, our apprentice, so some of his apprentice stuff is on there. Um, we have another artist, Haley, that's going to be up on there soon. Uh, she's just uh, she's just getting ready. She She's not set up to work right now. But as soon as she's ready to go, then we'll start pushing her artwork as, uh, a lot more. Um, but, um, yeah, it's just, I, I believe it's mainly my artwork on there right now. Right now, I'm the only full-time artist at Eden's Edge, uh, but we have two more that are on the way. Like I said, Eden's Edge was a project that Faith and I started doing because we just needed something to call our own. Um, we've been traveling a lot. We've been all over the country. And as much as we love traveling, because we really, really do love traveling, um, it became apparent that we needed we needed somewhere to come home to that was ours and that we could control. And starting our own tattoo studio was something that we did for that reason. Like right now, like I said again, Faith is right next to me and she's in her own little art space and she's um, doing a beading project and she's got her, um, she's got her oil paint set up and, and that's something that was very important uh, for us or to us. And that's one of the main reasons we started Eden's Edge. 
And we also try to, like, once, once we get going with Eden's Edge, we want to provide that atmosphere for other artists as well. So if we grow into something bigger, we want to maintain that artist atmosphere. Like, we never want to put monetization or money above doing what's best for the artist. And that's something that, you know, it can be very tempting to try to make a bigger profit, but um, we always remind each other, or sometimes they have to just remind me that's what we're all about is um, the artist first and, and creating an atmosphere that an artist can grow and, and feel very happy in and very supported and not pressure anyone to, to um, make huge profits. Again, but I mean, it's easier said than done sometimes, but we, we always, always try to push for that. It was something that was always missing in our lives um, that balance between work and passion. Oh, well, thank you. No problem, David. I appreciate it. My pleasure. time it's 11 34 everybody i think i've made some pretty decent progress as far as the underpainting is concerned um there's definitely a little more that i might mess with here and there so on the next stream what we're going to be doing is the uh the more working layers if you want to get a head start for how this project project is going to uh evolve from here if you can't wait for a few days when we come back to it and uh, you want to have a really good understanding for my process, then I recommend going to our Patreon page. Again, there's a video up called, uh, um, I think we call it monochromatic portrait, air, air, airbrush monochromatic portrait or something like that, um, where I walk you through this entire process um, and you can get a head start on it and then uh, you can come back and follow along during these live streams, in which case I'll be doing the exact same technique. So thank you guys very much for hanging out with me today. I'm glad to have you. And uh, yeah, hopefully you learned something here. Again, today was pretty much dedicated to just showing you how the stencil went down, how the beginning process was, and just to hang out with you guys a little bit. So um, stay with us. We'll pick up on this in a few days. Again, click the bell, like, all those good things. That way you know when we go back on stream again. Also on Patreon, I, I always try to let the patrons know if I know ahead of time when I'm going to stream, I'll, I'll go on Patreon first, and I'll let everyone know there. Um, but if you don't catch it during the stream, you can always watch it afterward. And hopefully, and almost certainly, we will have uh, a better internet connection next time. So anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, catch you next time. See ya.